everyone, good morning, and welcome to today's Zoo School Live episode. My name is Elisa, and today uh, we're gonna be meeting a very spiky friend, uh, but this week we're going to be learning about locomotion, so that means how the animals that we're gonna meet, how they move. Um, so before we begin, I have a very, very cool drawing of an animal that we met before. This was made by Bryce, who's in second grade from Phoenixville, Pennsylvania, and he drew Monty, and he drew Monty's meatballs, which is my favorite part. This is super awesome, Bryce. Next, before you meet our friend, uh, I'm gonna show you some closely related animals, okay? So, on this piece of paper, we have something called a moon rat over here. Then a shrew. Down on this corner, a mole. And then a European hedgehog. And of course, last but not least, an African pygmy hedgehog. And that African pygmy hedgehog is actually who we're going to meet. Um, before we do, I'm gonna show you two bio facts and then we're going to meet our very special friend, okay? So on this table here, um, we have the skull, so the upper uh, part of the skull and the lower jaw of a shrew. So a shrew is um, tinier than an African pygmy, pygmy hedgehog, but not, not by a lot. So we actually have a quarter there so that you can um, basically compare the size. That skull is smaller than a quarter, which is pretty crazy. But if you can tell, those teeth are really, really, really tiny and sharp. So a lot of people think that hedgehogs are related to uh, rodents, so groundhogs and squirrels. They're actually not closely related to them at all. They're more closely related to moles and shrews. And then going over to the right, we have what you guys I think have seen before when we met Pokey, the North American porcupine. These are actually North American porcupine quills. So these are wider and longer and a little bit more dangerous than hedgehog spikes or spines, but they're very similar. Uh, so without further ado, we're going to meet our friend June. And June here is in what we call a dig box. So if you guys remember when we met Bree, the striped skunk, um, we made her a dig box. And the locomotive behavior that we're going to focus on today with June is digging. So I don't know if you can see, she is moving her nose a mile a minute. That's because these guys have a fantastic sense of smell. It's much better than their eyesight. And they use that nose to help them to find their favorite food. So I'm gonna wait and see if you guys wanna put in the comments what you think something like a hedgehog might love to eat. They eat lots of different kinds of things, but there's something that they like more than anything else, and I think she actually can smell them. And they are mealworms. Mealworms are her absolute favorite thing in the world to eat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some mealworms in this dig box so that she can use her nose to sniff around and dig under this different substrate in order to find them. So substrate is just kind of what goes on the bottom of our animal's enclosures. So you can see we have something called EcoFlake here. Um, we also have some uh, fake grass and we also have dirt. So substrate is important for animals' feet so that they don't um, wear down. <laughs> you can see she's digging and eating that mealworm right on up. These guys can actually smell two to three inches underground, which is really sad because she totally just missed that mealworm, but that's okay. We'll give her another chance. And um, their favorite thing to eat are bugs. So these guys are omnivores, which means that they eat fruits and veggies along with meat, um, but more specifically, they're called insectivores. <laughs> so that means that they're primarily going to eat bugs. That's definitely their favorite thing. Uh, so mealworms, crickets, and the wild, they'll be eating um, a lot more variety of things. So maybe some occasional reptiles, amphibians that are smaller, but any, any type of termite or ant or bug or insect or arthropod or even spiders, these guys love to eat. 
They're super tiny and they'll actually walk up to three miles a night um, with their little teeny tiny legs to eat bugs and they'll eat up to three times their body weight in bugs. That's a lot of bugs. So these guys are, are good keeping that bug population down, right? Um, so these guys, although they don't have very long legs, they do have the ability to dig with those nails of, that they have. So uh, they have pretty decent sized nails. They're not sharp. They're very similar to Breed the Skunk where they're sturdy, um, but they're dull. So they're not, they're not pointy. And that helps them to dig in the dirt for bugs, right? So Junebug here is an African pygmy hedgehog. So you guys saw before, the picture of, I didn't hide that one very well, did I? A picture of a European hedgehog and an African pygmy hedgehog. Um, the African pygmy hedgehog is a decent size smaller than the European hedgehog, and the European hedgehog can obviously be found in Europe. These guys are native to Central and Southern Africa, um, but they also have been brought over to New Zealand. So they weren't native to New Zealand, but they can be found there now because they were brought over to New Zealand. These guys are solitary, which means they like their alone time. So um, she does have two other hedgehogs that she has for neighbors, but she lives in her own enclosure. She likes it that way. That's okay. And she's also nocturnal. So she was sleeping before and we woke her up from her little nap just so that she could come and meet you guys. So these guys kind of adjust to our schedule um, so that they are accustomed to taking naps throughout the day. And just because they're nocturnal doesn't mean they're strictly nocturnal. So uh, these guys will be active if, you know, they get hungry or need to get some water or need to get some exercise. Um, the average lifespan of these guys in the wild is about three years. Um, in human care, so at a zoo, they could live to be maybe four or five, but they don't live that long, unfortunately. Um, you can have these as a pet, but not in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, and they are a little bit difficult to take care of in the fact that they do prefer to be more active at nighttime. So you're not, you're not really gonna be able to play with them all that much. They also have very, very, very sharp teeth and spikes, right? They have those spikes. So a similar motion that they do aside from digging, uh, you can compare it to maybe like a turtle. So turtles will bring their legs, so their limbs and their head and their tail into their shell to hide if they're scared. These guys do a very similar motion where they curl up into a ball. So these guys have spikes or spines, which are a little bit different than porcupine quills. So remember when we had pokey, um, we learned that quills of porcupines can detach from their body and stick under the skin of their uh, predator. These guys, their spikes stay in their skin. But that doesn't mean that they don't hurt. They're still very sharp. They're there specifically to protect them. Um, they're small species, so uh, things would like to eat this guy, but not when those spikes go up. They also uh, crisscross, so if you guys take your hands and you look like you're going to fold them on your lap, but instead of putting your fingers down, you stick them straight up, that's what their spikes do. They crisscross, so their entire body is covered um, by those spikes. They don't leave a single part of that skin vulnerable um, to being open for attack. The only part of their body that is not covered with those spikes are directly on their face, as she's covered in all of that eco flake, and their belly. So, unlike turtles that have a shell to protect themselves, these guys have those spikes. They have the ability to bring their limbs really close to their body, very similar to a turtle though, and wrap those limbs inside their skin um, and their face. They actually have, I don't know if you can see if she turns around, um, she has spikes very, very close to her forehead and she actually has a muscle on that forehead. So that, that forehead muscle, so a muscle just like your bicep on your arm, that forehead muscle brings those spikes and wraps around her entire face. So I'm going to pick her up just so you guys can see um, she'll probably put her spikes up. It is okay. She is accustomed to being picked up. Actually, she's doing it right now. That just that I <laughs> from standing up. But I'm gonna pick her up just so you can see how she wraps her body around her belly. Okay. 
see, she wraps right up into a ball and she can bring her legs and her feet into her body. Luckily, you can see that she's coming out of that ball and that's a good indication that she, uh, that shows that she's not, not scared. She got a little bit nervous initially, but then she gets right back to it and is perfectly fine. You can see that when I picked her up, her spikes crisscrossed and now they're laying down flat, which is another sign of her being nice and calm. So she's a very wiggle worm. We're gonna put her right back down because she seems to be more comfortable on the ground, right? So you can see before that she was digging under that eco flake. Um, they do dig burrows to uh, sleep and to hang out in, but again, also to find those bugs. So let's see if we can hide a couple more mealworms for you guys to watch her dig, okay? Let's hide this one a little bit better. I didn't do a very good job last time. Oh, she might smell it. Oh, no, oh, she says I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over here. It's okay, put it in there. right over it there, June Bug. She'll find it eventually. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so as June Bug is walking around, um, hopefully displaying some digging behavior, um, perfect timing there, June, very good, right on cue. <laughs> uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and um, start answering some questions. So um, I think we would like to first say a special hello to Tegan and Victoria watching all the way from San Diego, California. Um, and they have a few questions to get us started. So they asked um, three questions. What is Junebug's favorite toy? Very good question, Tegan and Victoria. Junebug's favorite toy and May our other hedgehog and August, or Gus Gus, our third hedgehog, their favorite toys are all their wheels. They love their wheels. And the way that we know that they love their wheels because we don't often see them running on them is that they're actually covered in poop when we have to go clean the wheels in the morning so we know that they use them like crazy. Um, so their wheels are definitely their favorite toy. Uh, the second question is, how did she get her name? Very good question. So, although Junebug was born on October 18th, uh, we named her Junebug because we named our other hedgehog who is no longer with us April, and then we got another hedgehog who we named May. So we were going with a summer month theme. Um, so uh, we have May, Junebug, and Gus Gus. And then the last question from Tegan and Victoria is, what is her favorite food? So her favorite food, again, that we said earlier in the episode are mealworms. Mealworms are definitely her favorite. Uh, crickets would be a nice uh, food enrichment as well. However, she does get a pellet that is very similar to what you would give your cat, cat food or your dog, dog food. It's just an insectivore pellet, so made for, um, animals that really like to eat bugs. It's just in a pellet form, but she also does get fruits and veggies. The fruits and veggies are not her favorite though. The mealworms are definitely her favorite. Thanks for all of those beginning questions, Tegan and Victoria. Uh, we're gonna go to AJ. Um, AJ, your birthday's today. You're four years old. Guess what? You're older than June. Um, June will be two years old in October. So AJ, you are older than Junebug here, and happy birthday. I hope you're enjoying our uh, episode, and thanks so much for tuning in. Dylan wants to know how long she is. Very good question. Dylan, um, she is not even a foot long. She's pretty pretty short. She's uh, a couple inches, maybe maybe half, half a foot, uh, and she only weighs about 350 grams, so about a can of soup. Very similar to the weight of a can of soup, so she's not very heavy at all. We can't even weigh her in, in pounds because she doesn't even weigh a pound. Great question, Dylan. Cassidy would like to know how she came to Elmwood Park Zoo. Very good question, Cassidy. Um, Junebug here was actually a donation from the Philadelphia Zoo, so that's where Junebug came from. Wesley. Wesley states that his sister's name is June, and sometimes you call her June Bug. Well, that's awesome. I hope that your sister doesn't have spikes like uh, our friend here 
though that would be a little bit dangerous, right? Um, Gretchen and Paul. Gretchen and Paul. They would like to know if they make a good pet. Good question, Gretchen and Paul. Um, well, it's interesting here because in the state of Pennsylvania, these guys are illegal to own as pets. Um, they can be, to my knowledge, um, be kept as pets in New Jersey, however, which is right next door. Um, they can make good pets in the fact that they don't make a lot of noise, but other than that, um, they are an omnivore, which means their poop is smelly and big because they're eating meat products and they are really more active at nighttime. So their, their schedule is pretty much flipped from people. They can get accustomed to humans. Um, just like you saw when I held June, she came out of uh, her ball rather quickly. Um, but you would have to handle them from a very, very young age and for uh, a really long time every day. The other thing is they unfortunately really don't live very long. Um, hedgehogs, uh, African pygmy hedgehogs in particular, are pretty prone to cancer. Um, so I would say do your research first before inquiring about getting a hedgehog as a pet. Um, I would say uh, you know most smaller reptiles might be might be better or easier. Jake would like to know if she has any brothers or sisters. Very good question, Jake. So yes, she has some brothers and sisters. I don't know how many. Um, I'm pretty sure that they are still at the Philadelphia Zoo. Um, but she doesn't have any sisters or brothers here at Elmwood Park Zoo. She does have two hedgehog neighbors though. Um, she has Gus Gus and um, May. Jennifer would like to know how old she is. Good question, Jennifer. So she will be turning two years old on October 18th. So she's about middle-aged for, for a hedgehog. Megan would like to know if she has friends at the zoo. You know what, Megan, she does not. She does not have friends at the zoo, maybe except for us educators. And the only reason she really uh, tolerates our existence is because we give her food and bugs to eat. Um, but she likes her alone time and living by herself. Reed would like to know if they're ever bluish in color like Sonic the Hedgehog. Mm -hmm. um, unless you spray painted your hedgehog, which I definitely don't recommend doing, um, even with safe paint, they probably wouldn't like that very much. No, uh, good question, Reed. They do not come in a bluish color. However, European hedgehogs are usually much darker. Um, they're this brown, grayish color. Uh, these African pygmy hedgehogs do have that brown on their spikes or their spines. Um, but they're, they have that whitish um, hue to the tips of their spikes. Olivia would like to know how much she eats in a day. Great question, Olivia. So um, we feed them more closely to night time, so before we leave for the end of the day because they are nocturnal. Um, and usually they get 15 grams of that insectivore diet along with either six mealworms or six grams of fruits and veggies. So uh, she gets that about, about every night. Jill would like to know how long are their spikes or spines? So uh, as we are getting another look at her spikes or spines, I'm gonna hold a porcupine quill just next to her spikes so that you can maybe see the difference in length. So these North American porcupine quill is about an inch to an inch and a half long, and hers are much shorter than that. Um, I think less than half than that. So I would say less than half an inch. They're not very long at all. Alina and Sierra, and I'm sorry if I did not get your name right there, um, wants to know if they can swim. So they uh, actually can. Um, I'm sure you guys have probably seen some episodes of, um, we're just going to get her out and see if she likes to play in a little bit more of the dirt. There we go. Um, we have to put these guys in nice warm water to more easily trim their nails. Um, and they will like to paddle in, in the water. These guys in particular, our individual hedgehogs at Elmwood Park Zoo, aren't the biggest fan, but there are some videos out there where hedgehogs really, really like to, uh, to swim in water and you see some of them laying on their backs floating. 
right? Um, so it just depends on the individual. Uh, June Bug, she, she tolerates the water, um, but it's not her, not her most favorite. Brayden would like to know if she can get out of that box. Brayden, it is definitely possible. Um, luckily, she's not trying to. Um, she's more interested in digging, showing that locomotive behavior. So that is definitely good. Um, and then I think our last question, or maybe we'll do a couple more, maybe three more questions. Brandon wants to know why her eyes are so small. Very, very good observation and question, Brandon. So her eyes are so small because she's not really depending on her eyesight in order to survive. Uh, these guys are nocturnal. They're not really needing to see all that much. Um, instead, they're using that nose, that nose to smell. I'm gonna come over, right June? I know, I'm sorry. But we wanna see your cute little nose, okay? There we go. So they use their nose uh, because their nose is much more strong than their eyes. So that's why their nose is actually sticking up and is pretty um, visible, whereas their eyes are a lot smaller. Chase would like to know what their predators are. Great question, Chase. So these guys are native to Central and South America. Um, South America, wow, Central and South Africa, my bad. Uh, so jackals, honey badgers, and hyenas will uh, sometimes prey upon these guys. So pretty, pretty tough animals. You know, not a lot of animals want to bother uh, a hedgehog because they're covered in all of those nasty spikes or spines, right? And then Avner would like to know what is her natural habitat. So the savannas and grasslands of Africa would be their natural habitat. Great question. And then it looks like Erica wants to let us know that she's thankful for showing Junebug. You're very welcome, Erica. Um, and she is your son Blake's favorite animal, Blake. Thank you so much for having such a favorite animal um, as wonderful as June. Um, I'm sure that we will tell her later when she stops hiding how much you love her, all right? Um, and then two more questions, let's see. Michael would like to know how many spikes does she have? Qu great question, Michael. You know what, I'm not actually sure, right? Because porcupines have, um, I'm not exactly sure how many spikes hedgehogs have so you know what we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna look that up and then when we answer some more questions after our live feed I will try my best to answer that question for you okay Michael and then Lauren would like to know does she have any vulnerable spots so Lauren like we had said a little bit earlier in the episode and I am gonna take her out again just so that we can say goodbye um, and then maybe I can show you that one little vulnerable spot that she has is just her belly that's the only spot that she has that is not covered in those spikes or spines. So once she relaxes, she'll probably show you that cute little belly of hers. There we go. Very good girl, June. Wanna say bye to all your friends? All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in with us today. Um, please make sure to check out the link that we've posted um, to go along with our lesson for today. It's an activity uh, relating to a hedgehog craft. Um, and if you're thinking of helping out the zoo, we would so appreciate it. You can look to donate to our emergency fund, which can also be found on our website. All right, thanks so much guys, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.